What's going on everybody? Welcome to Northern Brewer HQ in lovely Roseville, Minnesota. I am Chip Walton, the AV nerd. This is Brad Seagull, the head development brewer. That's correct. The man that is correct. behind all of the awesome recipe kits. And speaking of recipe kits, what we have before us are is the last few ounces of two very special beers, two very big and well-aged beers. And we could not pass up the opportunity before these kegs are officially kicked to talk about these recipes and talk about the benefits and the immaculate evolution of aging a beer such as this. So Brad, what do we have before us? All right, the lighter one here is the exotic tropic wheat wine. So that is, you know, basically the wheat equivalent of a barley wine. It is knock your socks off strong. And this one has been aging for five and a half years at this point. The other beer is our North E12. It's a Belgian quad. And this one is just about five years old. And um, it's pretty remarkable how they've evolved and the, the, the flavor nuances have changed over the years. And this is literally our last few ounces of this. I'm surprised the kegs didn't blow filling these taster glasses. Yeah, Brad couldn't enter these in the state fair because we we're like, there's no way we're going to get three <laughs> don't, bottles. Don't have bottles. No. So, so save those for, for your boy, Chip. Um, before we dig in, by the way, if you'd like to see videos of two guys nerding out about beer recipes, definitely smash the subscribe button, ring that bell, like this video. So both of these beers were brewed in 2016. Yep. Yep. Uh, what is the wheat wine kit? Uh, the wheat, kind of give me the stats. The wheat wine kit, it is original gravity of 1.090. Um, it's not awfully bitter. Uh, it only has an ounce of bittering addition of Amarillo at 60 minutes. Um, the grain bill is very simple. It's, it's half wheat malt, half pale malt. 100% uh, hopped with Amarillo right at the beginning, halfway through the boil, and then a, a Whirlpool flame out addition to get some of those oils in there. <laughs> And then it is fermented with the, you know, the, the Omega, I believe it's a YL200, uh, yeah, the tropical IPA yeast, um, otherwise Imperial, they call it citrus. And this yeast is just crazy at producing tropical flavors, mango, pineapple, and thought that would pair really well with the Amarillo. And uh, well, it turns out that it did. We should have mentioned we're basically kind of filing, filing this under uh, brew now to enjoy later yeah. uh, the idea being you could brew this now being late summer currently uh for the holidays or obviously for the holidays five years from now yep. potentially but when it's young um when when it's ready to drink i don't know how how many weeks past uh fermentation that is but talk to me about what it tastes yeah. like young yeah when it's young it's almost a little bit boozy hot uh it's it's there's a substantial amount of alcohol in here this comes out to almost 10 percent <laughs> And so when it's real young, it's, it's a little aggressive on the booziness. The hops are, you can really taste that orange kind of marmalade flavor from the Amarillo. And uh, the bitterness is a little, a little aggressive to begin with, uh, but that really, really, really mellows down even with say six months of aging. And everything really kind of seems to coalesce and all these flavors come together. You can discern all these individual flavors very specifically when the beer is young, now that it's aged, it's just really, really rounded out. And um, yeah, you don't get a whole lot of hoppiness. You do get this kind of like tropical zest yeah. undertone, but it's just like this golden barley wine, very luscious, malty, big beverage. I am sad that there's only a few ounces <laughs> left. <laughs> so Northy 12, is, is your nod to like the big boozy quads of, of Belgium. Yep. Uh, talk about the, what goes into this. Uh, this one is also very simple in the grain department. This is Pilsner and pale malt. Uh, if you're doing it all grain, you will find that it's, uh, it is Belgian Pilsner and Belgian pale malt. And then there is a healthy dollop of D180 candy syrup that goes in here. That stuff is just like motor oil dark. <laughs> because it is so well caramelized, it yep. gives these awesome flavors of raisin, fig, um, stone fruits almost. Moderately bitter, but we do get a lot of that uh, kind of floral, herbal, almost slightly earthy kind of kind of hop flavor from the, the combination of hops that are used in here. And then the D180, again, gives it that, that 
deep dark caramel and raisin and fig flavor and then you throw belgian yeast on that and i don't get a lot of that at this point i think a lot of those esters and all the the, the slight phenolics that this yeast produced and when it was young those were really yeah really front and center for sure uh and once again like as you let it age all these things just kind of completely mellow out and they just work together so much better i had a mead last week that was made with date and fig syrup and my brain oh, kind of goes back to that flavor that figgy yeah. date yep. like this really just seems like that's it almost, it's almost like, like, a, like fig juice <laughs> like a dessert wine <laughs> but a beer so these are both kits you could brew them now save them for yep. the holidays but we want to talk just a little bit about aging because brad who has the unique advantage of having like a bunch of chest chest freezers turned into kegerators and like no lack of real estate to let kegs sit for five years these are both in kegs got more fridge space than your average city block (laughs) yeah most people probably don't have that uh if you do i would say age it in a keg yeah if you've got a keg to spare and space for it i would say ideally uh age it in a keg it is impervious to light it's all aging in bulk so you're not going to have any variances bottle to bottle over this this time span and uh and it's really easy just to keep it on co2 so you can keep any oxygen out of there keep it from oxidizing keep it as fresh as possible sample them here and there every few months you know every six months or so and then you will also yeah you'll see it's pretty obvious when these beers um start to mature and really come into their own because they are a far cry from the aggressive nature of these when they're fresh due to the, the high alcohol content and and all the, especially in the wheat wine, all the, the fruity type ingredients and the, all those esters and all the oils from Amarillo that give you that, that orange, orange citrus, orange zest. You can certainly age it in bottles. That is nothing wrong with that. Um, for that, would definitely recommend using your normal priming solution, whether it's, you know, corn sugar for using fizz drops or, or what have you. And, uh, like a and, CBC yeah. conditioning yeast or something. Yep, do a conditioning yeast just to make sure that the yeast that would still be in suspension of the beer is not too tired and just too worn out yeah. to, to carbonate the bottles. So pitching a little bit of bottling yeast like the CBC, that would be a great idea. Um, prime it like you normally would. And uh, try to keep these bottles in the dark, ideally cellar temperature around 50 degrees. I mean, that's not always possible for everybody, but that would be... The ideal way to store it, you could also put it in the Belgian style bottles with a cork and a cage because that looks really cool. Yeah. It's, it's super fancy and then makes it great to give away as gifts. And if you bottle from a keg, we don't suggest aging that. Like, no. You could do that if you plan on giving them next week uh, or a for, week after bottling for presents. Yeah, but, or for entering competition. There's nothing wrong with that. But right. if you're going to age long term, definitely either bottle it right off the bat or just leave it in the keg. And that's going to give you easily your best results. Yeah, these are delicious. I am. I like actually, the wheat wine out of the two. I think. Yeah, I do too. It does. After you come back from this one, you're like, oh, there is actually some hop in this. It's that amarillo, baby. Yeah, that orange, that marmalade. To your point. Mm. You can just smell that it's a big beer. It's kind of got that, that super, super maltiness to it that just lets you know there's a heck of a lot of fermentables in here. <laughs> and uh, you get that, that, that really weedy type note too, like almost like fresh whole grain wheat bread. Um, that is a, quite apparent in the aroma and the flavor because this is, again, 50% wheat. Yeah, if you're brewing this one all grain, I would absolutely recommend uh, uh, rice hulls in your mash tun. Wheat is huskless, so you can easily stick up your mash. So rice hulls, I mean, if you're gonna take the time and go through the effort to make a beer this big and badass, Definitely use rice hulls so you don't stick your mash. Pitch a lot of yeast. You're gonna want a big starter. These are both these beers start at 1090, and that that takes a lot of really active, clean, healthy yeast to fully chew that down and not leave any off flavors behind. All right, y'all. So brew now. Enjoy later. If you have any questions about that kind of brewing and aging, hit up brewmaster at northernbrewer.com, and you might even hear from Brad. Either way, I appreciate it. I've drank mine faster because you did all the talking. (laughs) Cheers. Cheers. Both kits available, extract and all grain, northernbrewer.com. Age them up.